Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are building the Dark Lord himself, Darth Vader, Rebel style. That's right, today we're putting together my Rebels Darth Vader helmet kit. I got it quite a while ago actually, I got it last year and you can see the unboxing of that one here. But I finally got around to finishing it for you guys. So here is the finishing process for the Vader helmet. So I won't spend too long going over the actual prepping of the helmet. It's fairly straightforward. The kit I received was so nice. There were no seams or any imperfections to speak of that I had to clean up. It was pretty much ready for paint right out of the box. The only thing I needed to do was trim away the areas that needed to be cut out, which were the two eyes, the sort of muzzle grill and the triangle piece just on the chin. For these I started off just by drilling some holes and then went in with my Dremel tool. I used a sanding wheel to trim away most of the material. Then went in with a finer grinding bit to get closer to some of those details. Most of it was finished up with some needle files just to have that control over the final edge. And that was all the prep I needed to do. It was then ready for paint. I used a standard plastic grey primer first. I made sure the cast was clean by washing it in some warm water and that got rid of all the dust and everything as well and then I let it dry. Once I was sure it was fully dry, I went in with that primer. I did have a small reaction on there. I don't know if it was the paint or some residue left on the surface. I could then do the top coat in black. For this, I just used a standard matte black paint. Of course, Darth Vader's summit is glossy, um, but you don't necessarily have to do this with the paint. You can use a gloss clear coat, which is what I did afterwards. I was actually toying around with leaving it as the matte finish, but in the end, I decided to go with that traditional glossy look. And that was it, pretty simple so far. So I've got everything painted black. We have real problems with this. I don't know if you can see. I've had some really weird reactions on here. You know, I've even sanded it back. I had a couple of goes painting it, um, but it's still doing it. But we're gonna work with it. I recently saw this fantastic paint job by Nick Andalone. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. But it showed a battle damage Vader. It's, it's the movie Vader, unlike this one, but it's such a good paint job that I thought I'd try and do something a bit like it. I'm not going to go as far as uh, how he's done in that one because that one's quite scarred up and everything but I thought actually giving it a nice uh, weathering job would look quite cool on this helmet. I actually ended up mixing some of the Tamiya colours with those artisan water export oils and it made this really nice uh, metallic-y burnt looking brown colour which I ended up really liking so I actually went to town and did a whole lot of it over the front of the helmet. I then used some of that silver to do lots of chips and scratches. For this I used one of my brushes where all the bristles were kind of splayed. You can do some lovely dry brushed silver scratches. And then I used a barbecue skewer. I use these sort of trimmed off just to mix up the paint before I use it. But this actually is a really good way to apply chips and scratches just by hitting the surface when there's a little bit of paint on it. And it leaves very nice little natural looking scratches. The last things to do were to insert the eyes. These were little vacuum formed pieces in a sort of pinkish color material. They look a bit weird when they're off of the helmet, but once they're glued in and there's sort of darkness behind it, which there will be if you were to wear it, they get this really nice metallic red looking color. They were just trimmed up and hot glued in. I did the same thing with the mesh that goes in the grill and on the chin. This came with the kit and it's a sort of diamond shaped chicken wire kind of deal. I used tape to make a pattern and then just hot glued it in. I was sure to glue all of the edges so none of it would be pointy if you were to wear it. The very last step was to apply Velcro to the top of the faceplate and the inside of the dome just so the two pieces can sit together nicely. And that was it, the Vader helmet was done. Yeah, let's put you there, you're a 
big boy. So there it is guys, that's the Rebels Darth Vader helmet completed. This will now, of course, sit on the shelf and you'll be able to see it behind me. This was an excellent kit from the Rocketeer. I suggest going over there and seeing if he still does them. I know he sometimes casts these up, he does them in batches usually if he's still doing this one and the mold's still okay, you may be able to get your hands on one. I was a bit skeptical about this battle damage look when I started it, but I really love how it turned out. It looks quite subtle on camera, I guess. But it's a really beautiful helmet. Oh, go on then, I'll put it on. So I got so carried away wearing the Vader helmet for this video that I forgot to film the outro. I hope you all enjoyed watching, we are still in Rebel season here on Buckethead Props. I will of course see you in the next video, until then, take care, bye bye.